Hello, I'm Dr. Prasad Ayer and I'm a consultant and professor of medicine in the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. I'm here to give you an update on a recent publication in the American Journal of Gastroenterology last year. As perhaps many of you know, esophageal adenocarcinoma is a cancer which is lethal and has been rapidly rising in incidence over the last three to four decades. In distinction, when esophageal cancer is diagnosed at an early stage, we can more often than not treat it very successfully with endoscopic non-surgical techniques. Unfortunately, most esophageal adenocarcinomas are diagnosed at a later stage, which precludes endoscopic treatment and leads to fairly poor outcomes. We also know that esophageal cancer arises in a precancerous condition called Barrett's esophagus. Unfortunately, most cases of esophageal cancer, even though they do arise in Barrett's esophagus, are not diagnosed early in time because patients are not getting screened for this condition called Barrett's esophagus. At this moment, the only way of diagnosing Barrett's is by doing an invasive procedure called endoscopy, which requires intravenous sedation and costs thousands of dollars. This precludes the use of endoscopy as a widespread screening tool. Our efforts in the last several years have been directed at coming up with a minimally invasive and well tolerated and accurate technique which can screen for this precancerous condition called Barrett's esophagus. To this end, we have collaborated with the laboratory of Dr. David Alquist and more recently with Dr. John Kiesel to come up with genetic markers or DNA markers which can diagnose the presence of not only Barrett's esophagus but also dysplasia which is a precancerous change in Barrett's esophagus on cell samples obtained from the esophagus. We have combined these genetic markers with a minimally invasive tool called a sponge on a string. This technically simple device consists of a piece of polyurethane foam which is compressed inside a capsule the size of a multivitamin capsule attached to a string and hence the moniker sponge on a string or SOS. After discovering and validating these genetic markers for Barrett's esophagus, we conducted a pilot study on patients with and without Barrett's esophagus. Patients first swallowed the sponge on a string, which dissolves releasing the sponge within the stomach in a matter of five to eight minutes. The sponge is pulled out with the string attached, giving us approximately a million cells. These cells from the esophagus are then processed in the laboratory, extracting their DNA, and the DNA can be analyzed for genetic markers which are specific for Barrett's esophagus. In our initial pilot study, which we call the SOS1 trial, we were able to detect the presence or absence of Barrett's with almost 100% accuracy. We have subsequently built on these results doing a larger case control study wherein the accuracy remains high at 96 to 97%. In addition, we also showed in this pilot study that the SOS1 device was safe and well tolerated. In fact, over 80% of patients who swallowed the device said that they would prefer this to endoscopy. So our goal 
is to validate the findings of this larger trial in larger of the small trial in a larger case control and finally a screening population trial. Thank you.